So what I'd like to do is to have somebody who doesn't actually mind being on camera come up here and stand with me for me to be able to do a little bit about um, self-regulation and the brain in the palm of your hand. So we will let Joe be a baby for us. And as a baby, Joe is born with a brain. And her brain is born to broadcast signals, all kinds of signals. Signals of distress, that's when the baby's crying or fussing. Signals of joy, when the baby is laughing. Signals of sorrow or of missing a mother or someone else, the baby's broadcasting. The baby is born to broadcast. Babies are supposed to broadcast. They have to because they don't have language to be able to tell us what's happening. So because babies are also born to be immensely social beings, they're born to be in a responsive relationship with whoever is taking care of them and particularly with the mothering person. I'll use the word mother, but it's not actually a gendered word for me. It's the mothering person. So it can just as easily be a man uh, or a, a person of any gender, as well as a person who is cisgendered female. So here's the baby born to broadcast. I'm, I'm having her hand open because we're doing the brain in the palm of the hand, where the thumb, everybody put your hand up. The thumb is the center of the brain, the emotional part of the brain. And fold your fingers down over, and you kind of have a shape of a brain. And in the shape of the brain, this front part that comes and curls around the thumb is called the prefrontal cortex. It's called the orbitofrontal cortex, which is a little part of the prefrontal cortex that is the part that is the self-regulation part of the brain. So it curls down around, and but we're not born with it, with it essentially wired for the prefrontal cortex to hold and nestle the emotional part of the brain. Instead, of course, we're hardwired to broadcast. This is receiving. And we become softwired for self-regulation. So the way that the mom is with us changes us. So if, if the baby is startled, then, oh, then the mom's face, just for a microsecond, does what the baby's face is doing. And the mom's face is essentially saying to the baby, you make sense, of course. And then the mom goes and does whatever the mom does to take care of the baby. And, and every time the baby gets this jolt of, of responsiveness, then the baby has a sense that she makes sense. And every time this happens, new fibers are growing between the orbital frontal cortex and the central part of the emotional brain, which is called the amygdala. So that by the time this baby is 18 months old, this baby has internalized her mother. So when she's out in the world and she's scared, ah, she's scared, ah, then she remembers that she makes sense. Already by 18 months, we remember that we make sense. This is a very different picture if the baby doesn't make sense to the mother. And there are a lot of reasons for mothers not to be able to let a baby know that they make sense. High stress, poverty, disease, alcoholism, addiction, mental illness, postnatal depression. All of these things that can happen to mothers leave a mother in a situation where she's not available emotionally to be able to let the baby know that the baby makes sense. The mother's own experiences of being parented also have a huge effect on whether or not the mother can let the baby know that she makes sense. So if for the mother, the mother's mother, her, so here's, here's the baby, here's the mother, the mother's mother was not able to let the baby know that she made sense then the mother's face doesn't even know how to be in relationship with the baby. The mother doesn't even have a sense of, it, it's, um, it's so deeply wired in us, it actually happens by four months old. By 18 months old, the baby has the internalized mother, 
but by four months old, the baby's face is only the baby's face gets limited to what the mother can easily reflect. So there's this entire complex of relationship that's being in kind of installed or grown or nurtured in these the relationship between the baby's orbitofrontal cortex and her amygdala that happens so early that it's before words. And yet, it is the root of everything that happens to us as adults when we move into conflict situations. So, and, and we will learn this in more and more and more detail as we go through the weekend. But for now, what I want you to know is that, that this is what happens for babies. The fibers grow inside of their brains, the neurons grow inside of their brains to hold and nurture the little one. And the next thing I want you to know is that this baby moving into the world with an internalized mother that says, yes, you make sense, this baby's nervous system is um, is more resilient to stress than the baby whose mother can't do this. So what happens for the bra brain of the baby whose mother can't do this is that the baby is mostly in a, an alarm state. There's not a calming mechanism. The baby is easily alarmed and stays easily alarmed and is running their own cortisol in order to deal with stress. So the baby is moving into a state of alarm on a regular basis to be able to overcome the speed bumps of life. And this takes a long-term effect on our health and well-being so that if we don't get this experience of being held, our lives are actually shorter and our health is worse on every marker from, from heart disease to lung problems to uh, cancer Every, we're, we're, stress affects us across every marker neurobiologically. So th this, of course, is an interesting place to be standing in this moment because many of us have mothers who were impacted either by ge generations before or by their own life circumstances that kept them from being able to be responsive to their babies. So here's the very good news that we have. And Jenny, will you help me? OK. <clears throat> so let's say that this baby didn't have a mama that was able to let her know that she made sense. And she reaches the age of, let's say, 45. And then she meets, so all of her life, she's getting alarm, 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 alarm. That's how she's making it through. She's making it through by running on cortisol. But then she meets Jenny. And Jenny says, oh, yes, ah, you make sense. And even though this baby is now 45, now she's having the same experiences that the baby has before 18 months old. And what is so wonderful about being human is that these very fibers are the fibers that remain the most neuroplastic throughout our lives. So these fibers remain available to be changed by relationship. So we are deeply changed and we grow, we grow inside of our brains when people understand us. So then eventually, after a little while, this one, instead of having a mother to get, go down, this one, instead of having a mother to carry with her, has a Jenny to carry with her. <laughs> And so then th this one now gets to have improved health, yeah, and improved ease in the world, and a way to just be able to, to move through the world and, and find it to be a rich and beautiful place instead of being a place filled with terrors. Thank you both. Mm -hmm.